Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. And today we're taking a look at a new NVIDIA GPU, but this is not a gaming card. And it does have a little bit of an effect on the gaming GPU market, but maybe not necessarily in the same way you might think of off the top of your head. So let's go ahead and take a look at this, what amounts to a cryptocurrency monster. Now, I know that whenever we talk about mining GPUs or really even just co-opting gaming GPUs for the purpose of mining, I can almost feel everyone just sort of clenching up on the other side of the screen. So I do want to point out this mining GPU does affect the production of gaming GPUs, just not in the same way you might think. So the 170HX here actually uses the TSMC 7 nanometer process, which is not the same process or even for that matter, the same foundry used by Nvidia to produce other gaming GPUs like the RTX 3090s are the eight nanometer Samsung process, just like the uh, rest of the gaming lineup. However, that being said, AMD does use TSMC to produce its 7 nanometer chips, which would include all of those RX 6900 XTs, the 6800 XTs, and all the other gaming GPUs that you're trying to get your hands on. So while this particular card may not affect NVIDIA's ability to produce other gaming GPUs, it may actually at least contribute to the limitations that AMD is seeing with the production of their own GPUs, which then does trickle down to the actual gamer and the lack of ability of gamers to get their hands on gaming GPUs. With that being said, this particular card is a very much cut down GA100, which again is not the same core used in any of NVIDIA's gaming focused GPUs. And also this means that these cards are likely just being sort of reused cards that were destined to be in the uh, A100 GPU that NVIDIA produces, the very sort of super high-end supercomputer uh, GPU out there. So these cards are probably just a way for NVIDIA to actually get a little bit of money out of essentially failed GPUs that don't make the cut for the A100. So with that roundabout explanation of how this does, but also doesn't really affect gaming GPUs, I do want to take a look at the actual article. This is from Tom's Hardware, and I'll also link the original tweet that sort of pointed out the listing for this GPU because even though we've known about this GPU for a while we haven't really seen it on sale anywhere until now. Now this card has finally appeared on the website viperatech.com. This is a Dubai based store and uh, it's $4,300. Very expensive obviously for any GPU, especially something that's uh, got to actually pay for itself over the long run. And especially when we're considering that the Ethereum or just generally other cryptocurrencies are extremely volatile. So there is a high startup cost for this GPU and it's going to take a while for you to earn your money back or and I'd say or I mean mine your money back with a GPU like this, especially because it has a 160 mega hash rate uh, rating with a TDP of 250 watts. Now at current pricing, the profitability of this card is roughly $325 and that's assuming 12 cents per kilowatt hour. And that's also assuming that the cryptocurrency market doesn't just completely tank in the near future. So it's gonna take about a year, actually a little bit more than a year to get your money back from this card at current rates. And that's a big ask if you're going to invest this much money into a GPU, knowing that a, a miner out there that's wanting to put one of these into a system is likely wanting several of these cards. And what complicates this investment even a little bit more is Ethereum moving away from proof of work. Now, obviously, there are still going to be other cryptocurrencies out there that you can use these GPUs to mine with but they may not be quite as profitable. They may be a little bit more tied up in costs related to uh, converting those coins, which are likely much less popular to a cryptocurrency that is popular. So there may just be added cost to actually mining those coins instead of something like Ethereum. So if you are a miner looking at a card like this, there's a lot of risk involved with purchasing one of these things. If on the other hand, you're a miner that actually expects Ethereum to skyrocket in the future, the move here may not be to recover all of the money invested in one of these cards immediately. It may be to just grab the Ethereum that you can while you can, and then to just hold onto it for a long period of time, knowing that it is possible that Ethereum will skyrocket 
market in the future where then you can get your money back out of these cards much easier. And of course, there are other risks associated with holding a cryptocurrency for a long period of time, like of course, the potential for it to completely tank and you lose all your money. But here's where I kick it back to you guys. I am curious if you had $4,300 laying around, uh, would this even be something you would consider investing in? Would you grab one of these cards, throw it into a rig and mine some Ethereum? Or would you just keep your money and have no interest whatsoever in mining? And for that matter, those of you out there that do mine on your primary gaming rig, let us know about your setup in those comments down below. Do you use it as a way to just sort of make some money back from your gaming rig? Or do you use it as a true, uh, like you purchased your gaming rig with the mindset being, I want to mine first and game on it a little bit later. Just let me know all your thoughts on mining in general in those comments down below. Otherwise, if you liked the video, like, share, comment down below. All those things are very helpful to the channel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.